Jason Jostefiak has a wonderful framework, uh, sort of a four uh, four legged chair, if you will, where you know you're harnessing beta. So uh, you know, and then and then you've got some prediction that you might want to do some tilts, um, and then you've got a bit of a protection side if you want to do some tail hedging, and then lastly, there's opportunistic. And and this weird opportunistic bucket is really quite hard because opportunistic can be as you you encountered a particular situation where you had a fairly high degree of confidence that in fact there's a number of things that the models are actually not aware of your models only know what inputs to the models are and you as a pm or over overseeing your own own portfolio do have a wider more pervasive view of the horizon so I mean, how do you, can we delve into how you do that even either, you know, with a particular sector that looks particularly good? I mean, this was a banking sector in the middle of a crisis. Great. You could look at, you know, tobacco stocks in 1999. You could look at uranium stocks today after a decade of, you know, just uh, being absolutely obliterated. Um, like, how do you, how do you work that in? I mean, there's different ways of doing it. And actually, I think another sort of paradigm that's quite nice and is, is um, often people say with your you know, financial advisors say you should reserve 5% of your money for, for just gambling. Right. Um, so you, you, for me, I think it's okay to, to say, right, most of my money is going to be run in this very structured and rigorous way. For most people, that probably means passive, you know, a diversified portfolio of passive ETFs. Yeah. And if you've got enough money, maybe some stocks. Um, and, and maybe you want to go beyond them, that and into tactical asset allocation and, and momentum and the stuff I do. Fine. Um, but the, the, the point is that it's our human instinct, firstly, for two things. Firstly, it's our human instinct to have a bit of fun. I mean, you know, and to be interested in things. And I, I said earlier when I was working, um, you know, in the industry, there's this constant stream of ideas and stuff coming in. So effectively, my entire portfolio consisted of this sort of discretionary fun kind of interesting stuff. I wouldn't even go as far as to call it opportunistic. That that's dignifying it with a name it does not deserve. That that implies, you know, a level of skill and rigor that was not there, with the possible exception of the trade we just talked about. Um, so I I think um, that um, it makes a lot of sense to to say actually, yeah, most of the time I'm going to run my money in this particular way, but I'm going to reserve a certain proportion of my risk capital for things that just come up, um, and they may be things that are outright gambles. Uh, in which case it should probably be quite a small amount of money, um, maybe 5%, maybe 1%, whatever your risk appetite is, whatever you can afford to lose. It should be money you can afford to lose. Um, or, and, um, you know, it's. I mean, it, there's sort of a link here between that and the kind of Nassim Taleb sort of barbell idea, isn't there, you know, where you, you yep. preserve a proportion of your money for kind of out-of-the-money options you think are cheap effectively. Um, and then um, on, and the, the, um, it could also be thing, opportunities, things that could come up. And that depends very much on, on firstly, on, on how much interest and time you're willing to spend on that as a bucket. So it might be that, that you just keep 5% of your risk capital aside and every year or so something comes up. Or it might be that you're spending more time on this and actually it's a quarter of your risk capital. That That's fine. Um, but the, the, the main point is, firstly, it should be a strict proportion of risk capital. You shouldn't just suddenly sell everything and go and buy, you know, um, GameStop because it's, it's that's the fun idea that's crossed your desk today. Um, and the second thing is that, that even within that that special bucket, you should still be applying some kind of system in terms of risk management and position management.